Today I'd like to talk about pituitary tumors. This is a really common problem and not always a problem but always a concern if a patient is diagnosed. As it turns out, nearly 20% of people in the United States, in fact in the world, have a pituitary tumor. It's nearly one in five people. Certainly not all of those people need surgery, but they do need some attention, at least surveillance and occasionally surgery. So let's talk a little bit about pituitary tumors today. First of all, where is the pituitary gland located? Well, we'll get to that in just a few moments, but if you've been diagnosed with a pituitary tumor, it's probably because you've complained of headache or perhaps some changes in either your vision or hormone function that have been disturbing to you, such as trouble with peripheral vision, not being able to see out here. Occasionally, it'll even be a crossed eye or double vision. More commonly, though, there are things related to overproduction of pituitary tumors, having too much growth hormone that can make the jaw very big, the mouth very big, even the tongue big. It can cause problems with sleep apnea, or different other types of problems with the pituitary gland can cause fatigue, bruisability, a big development of uh, a fatty pad either in the abdomen or behind the back. So these are the kind of things that usually bring patients to their doctors that might end up being diagnosed as a pituitary tumor. When the pituitary tumor is diagnosed, we still need to sort out whether or not this will require something as simple as surveillance for these benign tumors or whether it's going to need to be operated upon. As I said earlier, most patients who have pituitary tumors will be able to just have them followed and they won't give them clinical problems. But if patients develop either a problem with vision or a problem with over-secretion of pituitary hormones, then they're going to require surgery. So let's take a little look at what that might involve. This is a model of the brain. I want to draw your attention to this area right here of the pituitary gland. It's very close to the white structure here, which is the optic chiasm, from the Greek chi or X, meaning the X-shaped optic nerves or eye nerves that allow you to see. If the tumor is growing in this direction, it's likely we'll be recommending surgery in order to protect your vision. On the other hand, even much smaller tumors sometimes require surgery if they're causing some of those hormonal overproduction problems that we talked about earlier. So what happens if you find out that you're going to need to have surgery? Well, the good news is it's a pretty straightforward and simple surgery that can be done through the nose with no visible incision. What we do is use a surgical operating telescope, actually quite a bit smaller than this pen, under general anesthesia to go through the nostril. The surgeon's landmark here is the sphenoid sinus osteum. This little drainage hole in the uh, sinus behind the nose. That will lead us to the base of the skull where the pituitary gland is located and through a series of long and very small instruments the tumor can be extracted through the nose. It's a very safe operation, generally takes two to three hours and a two to three day hospital stay. So the things to remember if you're diagnosed with a pituitary tumor are, number one, many patients will never need anything more than surveillance. Number two, if you do need surgery, they're usually benign. And number three, the operation is something that can usually be done quite safely through the nose in a fairly well-tolerated operation. So it will not need to shorten your length or dramatically alter your life, but it does need attention.